OK, let's try and prove this fact about the number of elements in the power set. Here's a way of thinking about it that's going to help us. Imagine that we're thinking again about the case with the elements 1, 2, and 3. OK? So for each element, how, how are we going to write down all possible subsets of this? Imagine that for each element, you know, you've got to decide, yes, it's in the subset, or no, it isn't. So to specify, to specify a subset, what you have to do is pick yes or no for each one of these elements. For example, if we were going to take the subset 1, 2, what we would have done was we'd have said yes to 1, yes to 2, and no to 3. So how many possible ways are there of choosing a yes or a no for each of these? Well, what that's saying is you have a choice of two possibilities for each element. Right? Yes or no. And so how many ways of doing that are that? Well, there's two for each element, so it's 2 times 2 times 2. So it's 2 to the power of n. OK? Let's try and write that down formally. Uh, given a set with n elements, a subset is determined by a choice by choosing yes or no for each element. So the number of possible the number of possibilities is two to the power of n because there's one choice for each element. Now that's not a terribly formal way of writing it down because I hope that it's clear. And once we've done induction, we'll have a much more formal way of writing this down. In fact. What I've written down here is related to the idea of a characteristic function. So a characteristic function is where you take a set of things and you map it to a two-element set. So you can think of it as getting mapped to the set containing yes and no. But because that's not very mathematical, we often map it to the set 0 and 1, a kind of binary thing. This is related to how computers work a lot. You do everything by zeros and ones. So if you give something a value of 1, that means yes or true. And if you give something a value of 0, that means no or untrue. So what we've done is we've mapped each element of our set to 0 or 1, where 1 means yes, you're in the subset, and 0 means no, you're not in the subset. And so in the end, each of those maps, each of those mappings, so we take s and we kind of map everything to the set 0, 1, each of those implicitly determines a subset of S, and that's called a characteristic function. We're going to look at functions quite soon, and then we'll see that there's a way of counting all possible functions from one place to another, basically using the same argument as this. So that'll give us yet another way of thinking about the number of elements in a power set. Well, that's all there is to that proof, really.